Now I'd like to talk, to some, talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, and uh, that's the iPhone. You know, in a few weeks, it's going to be iPhone's first birthday. We shipped our first iPhones on June 29th. And it was an amazing intro, certainly the most amazing one we've ever had. Uh, and iPhone has had tremendous uh, critical acclaim, best invention of the year. Uh, and I think it's widely believed that this is the phone that has changed phones forever. So that's all great. That's all great. But the thing that makes us the happiest <laughs> is that users love their iPhones. They love them. And, you know, 90% customer satisfaction. That's off the charts. I mean, what products today have 90% customer satisfaction? This is so wonderful. 98% are browsing. Mobile browsing's gone from nothing to 98% with the iPhone. Unbelievable. 94% are using email. 90% are using text messaging. And 80% are using 10 or more features. You can't even begin to figure out how to use 10 features on a normal phone. <laughs> so this is phenomenal. And in this first year, we have sold 6 million iPhones till we ran out some number of weeks ago. Six million iPhones. So we're pretty thrilled with this. Now, we did figure out what our next challenges are. The next mountain we have to climb to go to the next level. So what are these next challenges? First of all, 3G networking, faster networking. <laughs> Second of all, enterprise support, as we've heard. Third, third-party application support. Fourth, we need to sell iPhone in more countries. How do we know this? Well, we've sold iPhone in six countries so far, but believe me, they're in use in many more countries. <laughs> they are in use all over the world. And uh, so it's clear there is a demand for iPhones in many more countries. And last but not least, everybody wants an iPhone, but we need to make it more affordable. And we know this because we go out and talk to people who didn't buy iPhones, and the number one reason by far they all want one is they just can't afford it. Some of them can't afford it. So we need to make the iPhone more affordable. So, as we arrive at iPhone's first birthday, we're going to take it to the next level. And today, we're introducing the iPhone 3G. We've learned so much with the first iPhone. We've taken everything we've learned and more, and we've created the iPhone 3G. And it's beautiful. This is what it looks like. <laughs> it's even thinner at the edges. It's really beautiful. It's got a full plastic back. It's really nice. Solid metal buttons. The same gorgeous 3.5 inch display. Camera. Flush headphone jack, so you can use any headphones you like. <clears throat> improved audio, dramatically improved audio. It's really, really great. And it feels even better in your hand, if you can believe it. It's really quite wonderful, the iPhone 3G. Now, how does the iPhone 3G 
tackle these things? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at 3G. Why do you want 3G? Well, you want it for faster data downloads, right? And there's nowhere that you want faster data downloads more than the browser and downloading email attachments. So let's take a look at these first. First, the browser. We've taken an iPhone 3G and on the same phone in the same location, downloaded a website on Edge and downloaded the same website using 3G and we've captured the videos. So let's see how we do. We're off to the races here. A website with a lot of images on it, complex layout. 21 seconds on 3G. All right, 59 seconds on edge. So same phone, same location, 3G 2.8 times faster. But it's even more remarkable when you take a look at this next to Wi-Fi. You can see that the 3G speeds are actually approaching Wi-Fi. This has been my experience using the phone as well. It's amazingly zippy. This is also pretty amazing. We took two other state-of-the-art 3G phones, downloaded the same web pages, and the iPhone 3G is 36% faster than the Nokia N95 or the Treo 750. So that's pretty cool. And look at the result, by the way. <laughs> look at what you get, a full web page on the iPhone and something quite a bit less on some of these other products. 36% faster. So now let's uh, look at a very typical scenario. You've got an email attachment you want to look at. You tap on it. Let's do the same thing here, same phone, same place. The 3G version downloads in five seconds. And the Edge version in 18 seconds, that is 3.6 times faster on the 3G version. So we can see a real difference now of download speeds. And again, if we compare this to Wi-Fi, you'll see that the 3G is approaching Wi-Fi speeds. So we clearly can get faster data. One of the things we're also really proud of, though, is we're doing this with great battery life. The iPhone 3G, the battery life, the standby life, or the standby time, we've pushed to 300 hours of standby time. 2G talk time, we've been able to move up from 8 hours to 10 hours. On 2G talk time, these other, th or 3G talk time, excuse me, these other phones have 3G talk time in the 3 to 3.5 three hour range. We've managed to get five hours of 3G talk time, which is really an industry-leading amount of time. We're very pleased with this. Browsing, five to six hours of high-speed browsing. Video, seven hours. And audio, we've managed to get 24 hours of audio. <laughs> so, Great performance, great battery life. Now, one other thing that benefits from fast data, of course, is GPS. 
and we've built that into the new iPhone 3G as well. So, as you know, location services is going to be a really big deal on the iPhone with the iPhone 2.0 software. You saw a bit of that here today. It's going to explode. And of course, we get data from cell towers, location data. We get location data from Wi-Fi, and now we also get it from GPS. And using the GPS data, we can actually do tracking. So as an example here, we're going to drive down. We recorded this on Lombard Street. Lombard Street's a fun street in San Francisco that zigs and zags. And here we are driving down Lombard Street. And we can actually track as we move using GPS. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. You get the idea. <laughs> so built-in GPS and much, much faster data. So we think we can check off. 3G and add built in GPS to boot. OK. <laughs> Next, on to enterprise support. As we explained earlier, full Microsoft Exchange support using ActiveSync built into iPhone 2.0 software. All of the secure VPN and the other security standards, everything everybody's asked for built in. And we've gotten tremendous feedback from enterprise users that we are on exactly the right track. And we know we can now check off enterprise support. Third party applications, the SDK, the great tools. You saw the great apps. And we've got the best way to distribute them in the world. We think we can check off third party application support. More countries. We distribute iPhone in six countries today. We set ourselves the goal of 12 countries for the iPhone 3G and a stretch goal of getting to 25 countries over the next several months. Well, how do we do? Let me show you. So here we go. These are the countries we've added. So, 70 countries. We're 
we're going to be rolling out the iPhone 3G in 70 countries over the next several months. We're really thrilled with this. Next time you're in Malta and you need an iPhone 3G, <laughs> it'll be there for you. So again, North America, three primary countries. South and Central America, 15 countries. Europe, 29 countries, and Asia and Australia, eight countries. So we're really, really excited about this. And we've been working with these great carriers to get us into these countries. These deals are all signed, sealed, and delivered. And we'll begin executing them really soon. So our stretch goal was 25 countries. We're going to be in 70 countries this year. We think we can check off more countries. <laughs> Which brings us to more affordable. You know, the iPhone started off at $599 for an 8 gig iPhone. It now sells for $399 for an 8 gig iPhone. And we want to make it even more affordable. And I'm really happy to tell you that the iPhone 3G is going to sell for $199. At a hundred at a hundred at just $199. We think the iPhone 3G is going to be affordable to almost everyone. And that's for the 8 gig model. The 16 gig model, just $299. And for the 16 gig model, we also have something special. We have a white one. It's also very beautiful. Very, very nice. But of course, the big news is $399 to $199. And we think we can check off more affordable. So 70 countries this year. We're going to start with 22 of the biggest. And we're going to be rolling out the iPhone 3G at the same time in all of these countries. And we're rolling it out on July 11th. <laughs> July 11th. And in almost every one of these countries, the price is a maximum of $199 all around the world. So we are really, really excited about the new iPhone 3G. And as you might expect, we have a new ad. So if you'd like to see it, I'd love to show it to you. Yeah? Let's go ahead and run the ad. It's finally here. The first phone to beat the iPhone. It surfs the web and downloads data twice as fast for half the price. Introducing the new iPhone 3G. Isn't that nice? You want to see that again? Let's roll that again. I love this ad. It's finally here. The first phone to beat the iPhone. It surfs the web and downloads data twice as fast for half the price. Introducing the new iPhone 3G. All right. So.
Just like the first iPhone, this new iPhone 3G is one of the most amazing products I've ever had the privilege to be associated with. And uh, I'd like for Tony and his team who are here today, all the ones back at the fort, and for Scott and his team that are here today to please stand up. Let's give him a round of applause. It's a great job. These guys right here. Woo! All these guys over here. You know, we've got such incredibly talented people at Apple, and they put their heart and souls into these products. And I hope you can feel it. So the iPhone 3G, July 11th, 22 countries. And that's just the start. <laughs>